Hi, Kendra Scott Well Institute Board of Directors. We are so happy to give you our KS Fall Institute updates for the spring 2021 semester. So again, thank you so much to all of our campus partners. We truly appreciate how everyone has interacted and engaged with the KS Fall Institute, not only this past spring semester, but also throughout the whole academic year. And we're happy to highlight some of the different ways that we have interacted with each of your areas on campus. But to help me do that, I am so happy to have some of our student interns and student managers to give this presentation to y'all. So each of them will speak on the different sections that they took responsibility of for the KSL Institute. Um, but I will lead us off and talk just a little bit about um, some of the higher, more curricular aspects of the KSL Institute. So on the academic side, we were really happy this semester to offer again the textiles and apparel accessory design development and merchandising course taught by Professor Jessica Chiarla. Voting for the winning piece for the spring semester is going to be happening so soon, so we're excited to, to see who is going to add to the collection of Kendra Scott produced jewelry. And then also with Cockrell School of Engineering, we offered our first ES 377, 397 STEM Innovation and Technology Commercialization course taught by Professor Van Truscott. So we're excited to add that to our portfolio of sponsored classes this semester. Um, virtual exhibition for TXA365, this is a video. So if you're watching this, go back and kick hit play on this so that you can see what students um, put together from that textiles and apparel course. Um, so yeah, these are embedded videos for y'all to watch and just learn a little bit more from the courses. Jacqueline um, is going to talk a little bit about some of the empowering aspects of the KS Well Institute. This is something that we have leaned into heavily for the academic year. And here are just a few of the ways that we were able to empower our women to lead. So here we have our first ever full cohort for spring 2021. We have 12 feature female founders. And here we have our KSL Institute survey, end of the year survey. You can scan the QR code to see it more. And lastly, we also had two student run projects by the MBA, so by Carmen and Stephanie and they helped us find out about the revenue model as well as the data SWOT analysis of the KSL Institute. And lastly, McCombs also did a capstone project and here they are presenting it. And lastly, we also entered the 40 by 40 hours acres and we did a one-to-one -one match and we raised $1,300. Hi y'all, my name is Eva Tyrion. I'm the uh, senior intern for marketing and events. Uh, happy to be here. Uh, our biggest uh, event this semester, um, some of y'all might remember, was International Women's Day hosted on March 8th. It was a virtual celebration. Uh, we had a lot of fun. One of the cool aspects of it uh, was this Choose to Challenge, uh, where we collected photos uh, of Kendra, of other campus stakeholders, of our students, um, and asked each person what they choose to challenge on International Women's Day. That ranged from gender inequality, um, you know, in the workplace to day to day things of, you know, I want to choose to challenge my own self limiting beliefs. Uh, this was cool. Um, Kendra Scott and um, TikTok got together at South by Southwest uh, and, you know, um, ran a uh, give back campaign where 20% of the proceeds went back to the Institute, um, which ended up raising over uh, $23,000. So looking at the numbers, uh, we had 387 registrations um, and uh, we this ranged from community members to UT Austin students, to students outside of the UT community. Uh, we had over 20 speakers and panelists. It, you know, these were all industry experts um, giving their wisdom to us. We had three sponsors, 10 content partners, five campus partners and five prize partners. Um, and some other cool stats in there as well that I won't get into. Looking at the attendee profile, and uh, just to mention these stats are a representative sample of respondents. Um, this isn't all encapsulating, but uh, the average attendee was female, uh, not a first gen, uh, 
early in their entrepreneurial journey, um, most often graduating in 2021, uh, and most frequently a marketing or a finance major. We had fantastic reactions on a scale from one to 10 participants on average rated the likelihood of recommending this event to a friend as a 9.3. We're really happy about that. 65% of participants responded that IWD was either their first or second um, institute event, which is really exciting. Uh, and then we can you can look at the other stats in your own time. Uh, we had fantastic engagement online. We ran a lot of different campaigns um, leading up to International Women's Day, specifically in the um, the two weeks leading up when we were really uh, heavying down on um, content. We also did some recaps afterwards. Uh, and then they're also, um, we also are offering some watch whenever sessions on our website uh, post International Women's Day. So if you missed some of the content, you're welcome to go back on our website and check it all out. Uh, this is exciting. This is happening a week from today. Uh, we're doing our first um, ribbon cutting and senior recognition ceremony in the Kendra Scott Center on campus on Friday, May 14th. Um, we're really excited to be able to see each other in person safely. Um, there will be refreshments, balloons, um, the whole nine yards. We're looking forward to it. Uh, so question that comes up a lot is, you know, how can I get engaged? Um, with the Kendra Scott Women's Entrepreneurial Leadership Institute. Uh, there's a bunch of different options, you know, joining our mailing list, um, attending a bunch of our events. Uh, this one's really cool. We're running an active Slack channel um, for external community members. And then finally, uh, reading um, our blog, which is linked on our website and features a lot of different blog writers from our student advisory board. And then lastly, and most importantly, following us at KSWell Institute on all social media channels. Uh, our social media has grown a lot over the course of this semester. Um, I won't get into the exact numbers, but uh, one cool thing to note is that we did launch our TikTok. So that's been a really fun project. And then we also have um, a, we're running our Instagram feed on our website now, uh, which is cool. And Jessica can talk more about that. Definitely. So we're so excited to have this embedded in the KS Wall Institute website to be able to showcase these empowering women events and opportunities, as well as direct visitors from our website to our social, social media accounts. So for our newsletter, we're excited to have reached 4,400 subscribers, and we send out the Creative and Courageous newsletter bi-monthly for events and KS Wall Institute opportunities. We also have a featured female founder spotlight newsletter at the beginning of each month to help support these incredible female founders. We've also created some exciting backdrops and banners in advance of the senior and river ribbon cutting event that we're excited to spotlight and have opportunities for people to take photos and utilize for wayfinding. And our digital download is our newest thing. We're starting to have coloring pages for people to engage with the KS Wall Institute content. And this design was designed by Caitlin Roy. And it's a beautiful hook -em with the Everlyn bracelet. As I mentioned, we launched our TikTok this semester, and that's been a fun project, especially involving uh, student council members and student advisory board members getting their faces online. Uh, and it's been, it's been really fun. It's been creative. It's been exciting. Uh, like I mentioned, also, uh, we encourage you to join the Well Institute Slack virtual space if you're not already on it. We're up to 565 members, which is really fun. And day-to-day, uh, -day we post announcements, both um, institute-related and also externally um, on the larger campus and the larger Austin Entrepreneurial Network. Uh, so it's an opportunity to chat with students and get access to exclusive giveaways and that kind of thing. Uh, every so often will also be featured on the Kendra Scott website, uh, which is very exciting for us. And then we also have a Spotify playlist uh, that's all about empowering women. Um, yeah, hi, I'm Mia Grimes and I um, have been working on the YouTube channel. We went from um, being just a playlist um, from the liberal arts YouTube to having our own YouTube where we can create playlists of all the exciting things we're doing um, and just categorize some things um, and direct people to the courses we're doing and um, make it easier for people to see some of the stuff um, that we're doing 
All right, so now circling back to some of our other events from this semester, we had a really wide variety and some programs we ran for the very first time. Uh, the first is a panel we hosted alongside of the Moody College of Communication. It was called A New Era of Entrepreneurship. We had 20 students attend and four keynote speakers. The goal of this panel uh, was to learn from female entrepreneurs located in Silicon Hills, Valley, and Beach as they shared their startup journeys. You know, we heard these young industry leaders' perspectives um, on the Silicon Hubs, and that was super valuable. This was a program that we launched for the first time in partnership with Launchpad. It ran from March 30th to May 4th. Uh, we had 20 students attend and four keynote speakers. Uh, it, it was super exciting. A few of the speakers also brought in um, additional guests and um, the overall goal of this was to look at entrepreneurship through a female focused lens. Like I mentioned, um, there were four different topics, effective decision making, um, ideation, customer discovery and persuasive communication. Uh, we, in tandem with She Speaks, we also worked on the Entrepreneurial Mindset Bootcamp with Launchpad that um, ran at the same time. These topics were similar um, and, like I said, uh, supplemented the She Speaks portion. Um, it was application-based and it taught undergraduate students an entrepreneurial approach to work and life. Additionally, we also launched our first book club, which was really exciting for us. This ran from February 2nd to April 29th. Uh, along with um, the option to uh, get a free book if you were one of the first regis registrations, we also offered a guided Slack channel with questions, um, some, some polls, some interactive elements um, for people to get to know each other and kind of just uh, keep updates on the book as they read. Our, um, at the end of cohort one, we had a live Q&A with Cindy Lowe, author of uh, Behind the Red Velvet Curtain and uh, CEO and founder of Red Velvet Events. That was super exciting and it was a nice intimate time for students to ask questions. Our second um, cohort, uh, we offered a live Q&A with Gay Gaddis, who is the founder of T3 um, and author of Cowgirl Power. This was equally as exciting and intimate and valuable. Uh, something that we worked on last semester and then continued it into this semester are, were our Empowering Women to Lead Civic Dinners. We held two this semester. Um, the first was immediately after International Women's Day and uh, members of Young Women's Alliance um, hosted these dinners with the uh, sweet edition of Tiff's Treats. We, between the two events, we had 45 students attend with 10 hosts. The second uh, Civic Dinners was actually just two weeks ago with Kendra Scott employees. Um, and they both have the same goal of, you know, providing a safe and intimate space for um, women to come together and talk about some of their uh, experiences in the entrepreneurial field. We also worked with McCombs. Um, to push out the diversity and inclusion and entrepreneurship panel. This happened on April 14th. Awesome. So I'm Samantha Bryant. And I'm Rashi Jane. And I have had the privilege of serving as the student, adv student advisory board president this year. I mean, Rashi is so excited to be able to be the student advisory board president elect who will be taking over in the summer and fall 2021 semesters. Um, and now that we've talked about kind of the larger events and broader context of how the KS Well Institute has engaged students, we'll also talk about how students have been involved directly in shaping and driving um, the vision behind the KS Well Institute. And so one of the key ways that students have been able to do this is as part of our student advisory board, which is made up of 23 diverse students across different majors, backgrounds and identities across the UT community. Um, getting to leave with these students has been really encouraging um, and been a great reminder that we can be leaders across different areas and be able to bring unique perspectives into the KS Well Institute community um, to just have better ideas and conversations related to entrepreneurial mindset. 
Just as a reminder, um, SAB does have four key objectives. I'm not going to go into the details, but I know that this year we've been able to exceed any expectations that our SAB members had for these objectives. Um, and we're actually in the process of conducting a year-end survey to be able to measure how well we've been able to achieve these objectives and see how we can continue to grow into the future. We also have collaborated with Student Council a lot this year within Student Advisory Board. And Student Council is the second branch and tier of how students can get involved within the KS Well Institute community. Student Council is a little bit of a smaller time commitment and a little bit of a larger group. And Student Council has grown a lot over the past semester, which has been really encouraging to see. And we've had more opportunities for students between Student Advisory Board and Student Council to collaborate, share ideas, create content together for our Instagram, um, TikTok channels, and just be able to really share ideas ideas about how we can continue to improve the Well Institute events and programs going forward. We also have continued our student run and bolden blog. Um, which has been really exciting. Student advisory board members have had the opportunity to really be creative and share their voices on topics such as how to increase productivity, um, in addition to study tips, interviewing other students, peers, and faculty members at the UT community. And we're excited to announce that Student Advisory Board will be launching a website of its own in connection with the KS Well Institute's website um, starting over the summer and really launching in fall of 2021. And now to quickly touch upon DIVE. DIVE is obviously our program where we go and we equip and educate high school students, specifically at the Ann Richards School. So not only do we mentor them on Fridays, but we also taught them on Tuesdays, the curriculum. And we also allowed them for their final project to do an elevator pitch and are giving them feedback on that project. So just looking at DIVE by the numbers. So we had about 20 new students across SAB and student council, and we had approximately uh, an average 90 of the high school students that came to every single session that we taught, and we had over 100 submissions for their final pitches that SAB and student council are now going to go and provide them feedback and grades. So kind of looking at what SAB has accomplished over the semester, obviously we've done a lot over the past year, which is awesome, but just to touch upon some highlights, we have a bank account when we're officially registered as a student organization, but we've also done a lot of things like growing our um, social media, the Embolden blog, but also the dive program, and then also collaborating with the alumni advisory board, whether that's through Empower Hours or the guest blog posts as well. So kind of looking at what SAB has, we also have a lot for the 2021 to 2022 school year. But looking at the highlights, we plan on announcing the leadership development program and more info is to come on that. But we also plan on launching things that we've done in the past, like revising dive and then relaunching it in 2022, our women's mentorship program, but then also doing recruiting, helping out with the events that are happening in the Long Institute, and then continuing to empower students to equip and teach them in allowing them to establish connections. And we're also very happy to say that we have chosen our 2021 to 2022 Student Advisory Board. So it was a very extensive process. Mia helped us create a promotional video, and we um, got a lot of applications. And we specifically targeted outreach to a lot of diverse organizations and individuals at UT. And it was a very competitive applicant pool, representing majors and backgrounds and different ideas across UT and identities, kind of showing you guys what that looks like. Um, for the new members that are returning, we have seven returning members, but for the 15 new members, we have nine rising seniors, eight rising juniors, and then five rising sophomores, as well as three MBA graduate student advisors who are happy to kind of ideate and brainstorm new innovations for SAB with, and the meetings will continue um, throughout the school year, but also we'll have a couple over the summer as well. One of the really awesome parts of ways that students can get involved within the KS Well Institute community isn't just while they're students at UT, but also whenever they graduate and are into the working world. And so we have our alumni advisory board and that allows students to stay connected to UT even when their time at the 40 acres is over. So I'll dive into a couple of their key programs and initiatives from this year. The first was the spring 2021 Empower Hour schedule. These were one hour time blocks where students got to connect directly with UT alumni um, and guest speakers and just be able to hear from them about topics of their choice. So some of the ones for spring 2021 included what it meant to be a female leader, how to build a purpose-driven company and finding your brand and defining personal values. So wide variety of topics and alumni advisory boards excited to roll out the fall 2021 list in the coming months. 
The Alumni Advisory Board is also receiving applications now for the 2021-2022 Alumni Advisory Board, and they're really looking forward to building and continuing the work that the board has already done this year. I mean, just building out a more diverse board to be able to have more opportunities to network with other professionals and like-minded peers across a variety of professional fields, um, in addition to having access to KS Well Institute events as alumni and community members, and really being able to continue to connect with students after their time at UT is over. AAB has accomplished a lot of things over the course of the semester, including launching the women's mentorship program, like Rosh, you mentioned earlier, in addition to being able to network with student advisory board students through that program and also just in one-off events like Empower Hour. They also had a letter writing service project where they wrote um, just nice little letters to people and were able to send them out, especially people who have been directly impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. And they hosted guest speakers um, at their meetings to help alumni continue to build their own personal and professional development. Um, yeah, so something that deserves a huge spotlight is the KS Center. Um, and this is um, just a, um, a space that we've been able to um, go to and study in and um, talk safely in and meet. And it's something that um, has been new to um, Leslie going to work there and um, going to do some meetings there. I've gotten to film there. It's a beautiful uh, light space. And um, we're going to uh, have a ribbon cutting. I'm sure you've heard us talk about the Friday, May 14th um, event, and it will be the grand opening for everyone to enjoy and um, kind of have a safe uh, party there. So, yeah. So looking ahead for fall 2021, we will continue with our sponsored courses. So we will be bringing back three courses, ever popular courses, the signature courses of the KS Well Institute with the Women in Entrepreneurship co-taught by Jan Ryan and Kendra Scott, the um, TXA 365 with Professor Jessica Tiarla and the um, MAN 347P with Dr. Melissa Murphy. And so we look forward to continuing conversations as a board about how to streamline these courses and especially create that journey map for students on ways to both curriculally and co curricularly engage engage with the KSL Institute um, through that women in entrepreneurship specialization. And also really exciting for the fall semester is our female founder pitch competition. And I'll let Eva tell you more. Absolutely. Yes. So we are um, gearing up for our our first female founder pitch competition this October. Uh, we're so, so proud to announce that we've raised up to $50,000 in cash prizes. So the timeline for this applications are due May 31st. Uh, we will be reviewing um, with a panel of judges um, in June. Uh, and once the final 25 are selected, uh, we, we will offer coaching workshops, mentoring and pitch training leading up to October, um, where they will be pitching live on stage to a panel of judges. So um, as I mentioned, female founders will pitch their early stage startup on stage to a panel of seasoned entrepreneurs, investors, corp corporate and government leaders. Uh, so there will be five divisions to enter, um, UT Austin undergrad, UT Austin grad, UT Austin faculty, Longhorn alum, and then finally community startups. And we're really creating this so everyone has an equal chance of competing at the level um, that their startup is in. Uh, you know, we're looking for early stage startups who are past the ideation phase and on their way to pitch readiness. Um, and then we just wanna kind of help support them with that funding, with that entrepreneurial mindset, with that confidence. As I mentioned, we're super excited um, to support these winners. Um, first place will receive $7,500 um, in each division. Second place in each division will receive $2,500. And then the Crowd Choice Award will receive a Dell computer. So some benefits of the pitch competition that we hope to offer to our finalists, um, you know, simply just that they were giving them an opportunity to invest in themselves and in their businesses. Uh, it's great application practice, um, great experience pitching. Uh, we are also including some coaching in there, you know, and we're really, we're marketing this event um, just to let uh, potential applicants know that even if they don't get selected, you know, we'll still provide them with feedback to make their 
about better. So uh, it's a kind of a win-win. Um, and then finally, of course, the potential to win. So um, with all that being said, applications are open until May 31st, as I mentioned. So we are encouraging our community to pitch and hook them. And that is our wrap up of the spring 2021 semester. Thank you so much to what I lovingly call my she army. We could not have had the semester, the year that we've had, especially in COVID. And, you know, I love that the KS1 Institute is truly for students and by students. And we so appreciate each of you and supporting the mission to empower women to lead and encourage the world to follow. Hook them. Thanks, y'all. <laughs> <laughs>